Good morning, New York. So he's not. Yeah, he's got to go. I'm gonna have to go to the house. I won't be long. I don't be but first, I want to say my name is Jawanta James Williams. I use he/him pronouns, and I'm the director of organizing at Vocal New York. Vocal New York is a statewide membership grassroots organization building power to end AIDS, mass incarceration, homelessness, and the racist, classist drug war, and end its consequences, hepatitis C, and the overdose crisis. We have chapters in Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, Albany, and Westchester County, and of course the five boroughs. So, today I am celebrating the fact that and since 2013, since the introduction of the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act, Vocal New York members, leaders, and staff have worked year after year, long before I was a leader in Vocal New York, before I worked with the organization, to make this bill a reality. So, of course, I want to thank the Star Smart Coalition, Cassandra Frederic, um, of the DPA, Melissa Moore of DPA, so many folks inside of Star Smart that really made a huge difference in this fight to legalize. Now, of course, what I most want to share here is that though we have legalized marijuana in a way that attempts to restore and repair the harms of racist prohibition for the last 40 years in New York State, it is not the end of the drug war. The drug war is a racist political system that's never been about health, never been about public safety, and has always been about crushing political dissent. The drug war is serpentine, and just like capitalism, it is a tool of capitalism. Capitalism is serpentine. Capitalism, this way, this economic system of organizing our society depends upon the dehumanization of human beings. It depended upon the slaughter of indigenous people, the removal of those folks from their lands, from their ancestral lands, land that we still stand on today. And because capitalism needs people to abuse, it needs that dehumanization, it therefore needs the ideologies of corruption, the ideologies of domination, namely white supremacy. So capitalism needs white supremacy, and white supremacy needs the dehumanization, the devaluing of black, brown, and poor people. Then it produces a culture of violence, a culture of annihilation ultimately, and that culture is responsible for prohibition. That culture is responsible for the drug war, and the drug war itself has been the vehicle, the primary vehicle of mass incarceration in the United States of America and all across the world. So when we legalize marijuana, we say to all of those people that are victims of the drug war, that is not true, that we should be doing something vastly different. So what I'm really here to say to everyone here, that we did not end the drug war by legalizing marijuana, and that the next step for us all is to decriminalize all drugs towards legalization, towards creating a safe supply of all the substances that people use. Marijuana reminds us that this has always been about a moralization. It has always been about political dissent, political crushing of black, brown, of workers, of Mexican immigrants. The reason we call marijuana marijuana in the States is because of that attempted, attempted racialization of this plant, of this use. So that's why I don't call it cannabis. I call it marijuana so I have an opportunity to remind people that in the United States we call cannabis marijuana specifically for drug war purposes, specifically for domination. So I call on everyone here not to just celebrate in this moment, but to double down in your commitment to end the racist, classist drug war. Because if we do not end the drug war, we are not affirming black life. Because if we are to affirm black lives, then we must understand how the drug war smell of cannabis, how the perception, how the possession, how the use of drugs, all drugs, has been the primary entry point of police engagement with black and brown people, and has often been the cause True. of extrajudicial killings. So when black and brown people are killed because they have entry with police using laws that legitimize that engagement, then they use those same laws as justification for our murders. We just saw that with George Floyd and the release of his toxicology report. We just saw that with the extrajudicial killing of Breonna Taylor in her bed after the claims of drug distribution. So if we want to end police violence, if we want to end prisons, if we call ourselves abolitionists, we have to be abolitionists across the board. We have to hold that complexity that the world that we're trying to build, the abolitionist future, is a future that has drug users. And not all drug use, as we all know, is problematic drug use. So we have to be able to take away from this situation 
remove ourselves from the frameworks of reality that is rooted in the dehumanization, that is rooted in a mass delusion known as white supremacy specifically for the purposes of maintaining and perpetuating and expanding capitalism, which is antithetical to democracy, which is antithetical to human life, which is antithetical to building the kind of future that each one of us deserve. And marijuana is a microcosm of what is possible for us. And also I want to correct all of us here. The 40% reinvestment into community funds or into social equity funds of marijuana legalization is not reparation. It is restitution. It is a disservice to the word reparation, to the concept, to the idea, to the legacies, to the realities of chattel slavery, of Jim Crow, of mass incarceration, of virulent anti-black racism to call marijuana legalization reinvestment reparations. It is not reparations. It is a microcosm. Reparations is something much vaster, something much more, much, much more difficult to imagine and much more important. So with that, again, my name is Juanza James Williams. I use your pronouns and I'm calling on you to go forth, to do the work, to not think that we have won the fight because marijuana legalization is only, again, a microcosm of what we need to be doing. Fight for full decrim, fight for the creation of a safe supply of all drugs, and then fight for full legalization of all drugs and to build the loving and caring social and economic and healthcare infrastructure that we need to take care of our people when they run into issues with drug use. Because remember, the vast majority of us that use drugs do not develop an addiction or a substance use disorder. The vast majority of us are totally fine because we have access to healthcare, because we have access to stable housing. So, thank you so much.